the Lord. Praise the Almighty God. Before I proceed, though my testimony is a bit long, and I'll plead for you people to pardon me and listen to it. One minute. Okay. But I would like to sing as well to appreciate God. Oh, Shemila, no. Makbolongo, re. Oh, Bato, Shemila, no. Makbolongo, re. 40 seconds more. Well, um, the reason why I said my testimony is a bit long, I've been coming a long way. I came from abroad after 20 years sojourn abroad, and I have everything a man should have. And I said, after 20 years, let me come back to Nigeria to establish. I studied autotronics, which means automobile and electronics. And that's what I was doing abroad, and I had my own company in UK, in Dublin, and I was planning to set up in US as well before coming to Nigeria. Then, after receiving everything I have to make it up in Nigeria, I said I was coming to set up an oil company, which I bought the machine to produce an engine oil. I have a site ready for me here in Nigeria. I started building everything, but my predicament started when my truck containing 17 million era worth of good was driven away from the port. Then um, the, the thief was apprehended and took to Ipanri police station. After every send and done, I was told to pay 10% of 1.7 million for mobilization to get my good recovery. But nothing happens. It makes loss upon loss. And from then, things started diminishing. The machine I brought to Nigeria got stuck at the pot, $53,000. The house I have at Lekki, I sold it when I needed money badly at the rate of 9 million naira. A five bedroom duplex, though not fully completed, but sitting on two plots of land. The second week I sold it, I discovered that a plot across me is going for 40 million naira. And there's nothing I could do. The, the uh, generator that was meant to be used for my company, 100 kVA Perkins, brand new, I brought. When I needed money, I had to sell it for 1.2 million naira. I sold it to one hotel at Festac, First View Hotel. They didn't pay me when they were taking it away, but it was started at my present. Brand new battery, brand new everything in the cage. But the moment the generator started, Tears rolled down my eyes. I know things was diminishing, but then I was struggling, doing running helter-skelter, seeing what I can do. But it never occurred to me to even return abroad, because if anybody is telling me that I should go back abroad, I always reject it in Jesus' name. I say, no, I reject it in Jesus' name. That what am I going there to do? Because I've sold all my businesses to make up money and come back to Nigeria. But then, I said, okay, let me start seeking the face of God. I was going for prayers every here and there. But thank God to one sister in this ministry, she invited me that I should come to her church, that her pastor is good to deliver me of every predicament. The first day um, to visit here, it was male night vigil. She said, it's only male that used to do the night vigil. I promise I'm prepared. That night I was sick. To the extent that the second day, they had to put drip on me and everything. And I wasn't sick before. But eventually, God made me down here. So when I was telling the pastor, the pastor picked me out of the audience and said, he saw me in an oil industry and was saying some things. And I said, yes. So he said I should step out to deliver my machine from the port, which is my oil machine. So I stepped out. But to my amazement, I was expecting the pastor to even pray on the machine itself. But then spirit took him the other way around and started praying for every losses in my life. You know? So that day was the first day in my life that I ever had encounter with the who is who in Nigeria. In my, in my dream. In my dream, I was with Oba Sanjo on shirt and trouser, and we were playing together, even tickling each other. 
Then it came to my crew and said, ah, but sir, why are you playing with me? Are we now met? He said, because you have been prayed for. Now I can deal with you. So then he sat me down and we started talking about things we can do about Nigeria. Then when I woke up, I said, oh, I shouldn't have come back. I should have been discussing with you. Then I prayed that God should connect me, as the pastor said. Then the next, the next uh, dream I had, I dreamt I was going to my village. I had some luggage packed. So on my way, uh, thieves wanted to attack me. I was struggling among them, and they said, no, you can't go anywhere. You are one of us. So I was dragging with them. Eventually, I developed wing. I was flying in the sky, and I was looking at them, and I was laughing, you know, like, whoa, what can you do now? So then, I, I came out of the dream. I prayed. Falling back to sleep, I found myself at the entrance of this spring, where I came the other day. So, there was chanting of protest outside that no more deliverance, no more deliverance. We don't want this anymore. And there was a man at the entrance with heavy tribal mark. I walk up to him. I said, sir, I'm here for deliverance. He said, are you a full member? I said, no. He said, okay, if you are not a full member, you are permitted to go in because most of the full member doesn't believe in their pastor. That that most of the members doesn't believe in their pastor. So the blessings and the deliverance is meant for the people from outside. So I went in. I went in and let, knelt at the altar. And pastor prayed for me. So inquisitively, I said, pastor, why are those people chanting? And pastor said, I have 20, I have 20 people here already to make it in this 2019, but you are number 21. So count yourself lucky. So I woke up again and started praying. So the, the final bombshell, I now dreamt of a little boy of about two years old. An old woman was beating him up. So he was crying without help. So I woke up to the woman. I said, Madam, what has happened? The woman said she doesn't know who owns the car that the boy was playing with. So I rescued the boy from the woman and I carried him as a baby, not more than two years. So to my surprise, the baby now said, do you know I've been suffered because of you? So I was shocked that he spoke and I said, sorry, can you tell me how old are you? And he said, it's 15 years. Then my mind came to rest and I said, how am I being so how are you being suffered because of me? He said, the car was meant for me. I said, sure. He said, yes, for me to be assured. He gave me the key. Uh, I thank, I, then I thank him. And he said, you probably need money. I said, of course I do. He dipped into his back pocket, brought out a wallet. Though he didn't pick out money from it, a wallet consisting money. He gave it to me. I said, okay, thank you. Then he said, I know you are traveling back abroad. And you will need a passport there. And he brought out a red passport and gave it to me. So that day, I woke up. I was praying, I was happy and everything. Then come around 2 o'clock. Shame on to the devil. Came around 2 o'clock. Uh, somebody called my number. Instead of saying, is that Mr. Ben? He introduced himself first. He said, this is Barrister John, representing so so family and so so place. Um, am I speaking to the... Uh, developer. I quickly rejected. I said, no, you are not speaking with any developer. Forgetting that there was a time I pretend to be a developer just to see if I can make money. There was a site at the Jewel but they wanted to develop. And I, did, I, gave, I gave them quotation of 90 million naira since 2016, not knowing that it's already 19, 19 or 90? 90 million, 90. zero. Thank you. 90 million, sir. 10 million less from 100 million. So it's 90 million. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so when I said no, when he said he wanted to speak with developer, I said no. Then he now said, Am I speaking? Am I not speaking with Mr. Ben Arulogun? I said yes. He said, I applied to develop a property at Coast Street to Joel Legba 
with social family. And I say, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. It's me. But it's because I heard of a solicitor or barista. That's what scared me, you know? So, <laughs> because it is true. <laughs> so, so I said, yes, I'm the one. He said, okay. To clarify, you are the one because you deny that you are not the one. Can you tell me your number? And I have the most simplest number in the world because I wanted to use it for my oil company. I said 081-221-33166. And he said, call me the second one. I said 081-221-33177. Then he said I should meet him at his office. To God be the glory, I went to the office. We signed all the paper. Tomorrow... <laughs> So, Let him finish, please. Yes, so, go on. So tomorrow we are to serve the quit notice to the all the occupants for the demolition to start in June, July to erect a new building there. And if, and as if that is not enough, the next Hear day, the next one, please. Hear the, the next the one. The next day again, you know, abroad where I was working, there's there's a company selling coal because they use coal to furnish their fireplace because of cold. You know, so I've actually applied to them to see if they can give me contract of bringing coal from Nigeria. They said they have someone already that they don't need me. But the next day after signing the contract, a call came from abroad and said they've been trying me for a very long time that the coal business I'm talking about, that they needed me to start supplying. <laughs> Amen. It's not finished. Listen. Here now. Okay. See, see I am very Amen. glad and happy giving this testimony to prove that there is a living God in this spring ministry. So, as if, as if that is not enough. <laughs> You know, year 2019 is definitely mine. You know, others can only share from me, but it's mine, you know. So then from the same from the same abroad, a friend now called, said, Ben, have, where have you been? I said, I'm in Nigeria. He said, Thank God he's always trying my number, but my number doesn't go through that. I just pick ah. it now to try. Your number and will start going through. <laughs> Yes, go on. Then he said, he said, what am I doing? I said, nothing. He said, am I coming abroad? I said, maybe very soon I'll be coming. He said, he needs me to come because there's something I've done for him that he wants me to reap. So I said, Victor, please, just me. He said, the insurance, uh, something I did that is already manifesting that he used to get 3,000 pounds uh, money every month as free and he has vowed he has made it uh, this new year resolution to be giving me the 1,500 pounds of it every week which is about 750,000 naira <laughs> here the next one <laughs> here wait hold on hey! hold on hold on you told me something about land. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. And what, what? Easy. Wait, wait, wait. What wait. pastor wanted you to hear? I'm adding another one, which happened after leaving pastor's place on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, may we not all suffer in Jesus' name. You see, at the point of need, because I was desperate to feed myself and I was not ready to steal or anything, part of the properties I have, I'm selling them at giveaway price. So there's one particular land I wanted to sell for 2.5 million, and the man offered me 1 million 80,000. And I said, okay, that I'm ready to sell it. Then we did all the paperwork and everything, and he asked me to take it to the 
uh, family or moneyless stuff and all that. But honestly, that was the end. They wouldn't pick up my call again. And I went back home. I was dejected, thinking, how do I cope? How do I live my life? But the same land, I was in a vehicle with someone. So the person just shouted, praise God. No! Ah! And I said, well, I said, uh, the contract she and her husband are pursuing from Malaysia came through. So I joined in celebrating good news by singing along with her. And she said, ah, now what is left is to look for a land though. Ah. I said, I have a land. He said, but the land we are looking for have to be by the express side. I said, yeah, my land is by the express side. He said, ah, it will be good. I said, ah. Oh, I don't know. I would have loved to buy from you. But the land we are looking for, there must be gas line beside. I said, there's gas line beside my land. And he said, we go. And they are begging me for four million. Right now. <laughs> so, so the one I said, I have not I told pastor. You know. In that dream, I had rest passport from that little boy who claims to be an angel waiting for me. I thought I was going to return abroad with visa. But the shocking news now came on Saturday that everything that I have planted to the government that I'm due for residency, that I should take my passport. <laughs> I didn't know you will honor me this way. I didn't know you will honor me this way. I didn't know you will honor me this way. You will honor me this way. Thank you, Jesus. I never know. I never know. You will honor me this way. I never know. I never know. You will answer me this way. I never know you will answer me this way. Answer me this way. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, I never know you will honor me this way. Hey, I never know you will answer me this way. I never know you will answer me this way. Answer me this way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sir, the day, the day you were picked out of the service, how many months ago? It's less than two weeks. It's less than two, two weeks. Two weeks. Less than Which, two. it will be two weeks on Tuesday. Yes. Um, I want to call your attention to something. Listen, I want to call your attention to something. I made a vow to God when there was no member. Lord, if I'm going to dip my hand into occultism tomorrow, if you know the juju they are bringing tomorrow, I can't say no. I'll be so weak and I will accept it. Father, let me sleep today and not wake up. I want to make heaven. Now, many wrong news has been spread about your pastor. Is he a who? Is this? Is that? Um, some of you even came to church and you doubted me the first time. Can I get a witness? Thank you. And you're like, is this a man of God? Should men of God be ugly? Should men of God be poor? I don't know. But something I know is, when you have breakthrough and people cannot understand, they mystify it. I want to call your attention to the dream he had. To one of those dreams. People were chanting, we don't want deliverance. We don't want deliverance. In this church again. And he met a man on the, by the door with heavy tribe I'm, i've told you angels at the gate they speak Egyptian language you don't understand and the man said don't mind them he said the old members in the church they don't get blessed anymore it's the young new ones coming in can i beg you old members the moment you take the grace of god on your pastor for granted you are cut off I am not he that does it. Every blessing comes from who? From God. Can you imagine in two weeks? That testimony is too much for two weeks. When he came and he shared, 
the contract. I said, whatever the contract is, I don't care how much is it. What God said to me about you, you have not stepped into it. As at Thursday or so that he came and shared the testimony with me, the issue about his residency, perfected there, has not come then. And I told him, more to come, more to come, just go. Between Thursday and now, residency settled. Now, can I pray for you? The spirit that takes God's servants and God's people for granted to the level where they miss their blessings, it will not stand in you. Every blessing that is in this assignment for you, may you have them all. In Jesus' name. Okay, kneel down. Let me pray again. Father, you will perfect these testimonies. Amen. It will become a global news. Amen. You will do much more than we expected. Amen. We seal these testimonies with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You were sharing testimony. People are standing up without telling them to stand. I pray for everyone the testimony that will give you standing ovation. He was sharing testimony. People were sowing seed without anybody begging to sow seed. The testimony we share that will move people to serve God. This year, it will happen for you. Amen. God bless you. Put your hands together for the Lord. Somebody saw good news.